This is a 1-4-5 progression commonly used in pop music. But in this video, I'll show you how you can swap your basic open chords and I'll tell you why these twinkly chords sound pretty and go well together. As always, feel free to take these chords and use them for your own songwriting. So the power of this chord progression all resolves around the first chord, this G major voicing. This typically isn't a chord voicing we would use, but I was made aware of its potential to be a super weapon for playing with our emotions during a fateful encounter. In a guitar lesson a few years ago, I was blessed enough to be teaching another fellow Midwest emo enthusiast, and it was in one of our regular lessons that he played this chord voicing. But it wasn't that chord itself that caught my attention, it's what he played after that really caught my ear. He showed me that this unconventional chord shape could be augmented by just making a few simple finger adjustments, unlocking a wealth of chord voicings perfect for speaking to that inner uh, emo self. By taking a finger off, barring across the seventh fret here, changes this G major to a G major seven perfect for adding a bit of emotion to the chord. Then by removing another finger here, we can take this major third and introduce the second and have a major seven sus two chord. And we can get even more creative and we can bring that second up to the third and all the way to the fourth to have a, a G major seven sus four chord there. And all of this allows you to get creative with writing ideas. Just like my example in the intro, I played around with these three chord voicings to create some kind of chord and melody movement at the same time. And the other neat thing about this chord is it's a fantastic setup chord to introduce more chords and create a chord progression. In our case, I went with the highly popular 1-4-5 progression, but I wanted to give a feeling of a twinkly alternate open tuning by using some of the open strings in standard tuning here. And I did that with the 4 and the 5 chords. So I chose a key I knew I could fit the higher open strings into quite easily, and that ended up being the key of G major. So for our 4 chord, I ended up with this C sus2 voicing. But when you introduce the open strings, it makes this lovely C major 9 voicing. And for the 5 chord, it's typically a dominant chord. And we've got our D7 voicing you could play here. But when I introduce the open strings, we get that B and E notes, and it makes this lovely, unique D13 chord. And as the 5 chord has a lot of tension and resolves perfectly back to the 1 chord, we can go from here to the... And that's why this chord progression just loops and sounds so lovely. In the intro, you heard how this chord progression sounds in a clean, pretty picking pattern. And now I want to take a similar approach, but this time I want to do something with more of a sparkly, overdriven sound and something with single coil pickups. But before we get to that example, I'm curious to know if there was a chord that you learned that changed everything for you. If so, let me know what that chord is down below in the comments. And perhaps it was from a particular song. It just goes to show that sometimes students are the best teachers. And if you're interested in learning more chord progressions like the one that you just learned in this video, then be sure to join my free weekly chord progression newsletter, where you'll join hundreds of other guitarists getting a chord progression landing in their inbox every single Wednesday, just to inspire some ideas, keep those creative juices flowing. If you're interested, check the link in the description to join. But before you do that, if you want to learn some of the best math rock and Midwest emo chord progressions out there, then be sure to watch this video next. A big thanks to the patrons that support this channel. If you're interested in supporting more content like this, then be sure to check the link in the description. That's it for now. See you in the next video. Goodbye.